we call on you, please make sure you uh, give your name and media outlet and players are on their way. I'd like to welcome you to this afternoon session. Pleased to be joined by student athletes from the Nevada Wolfpack. To my far uh, left is uh, senior guard Caleb Martin, the man in the middle, senior guard Cody Martin, and to my immediate left, Jazz Johnson, junior guard. This time we'll take uh, questions. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder to you. Front row. Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Uh, for both the Martin Twins, I know you and Jalen Hudson are pretty close. I guess what's your first memory of him, and how well do you know his game going into this contest? Start with Caleb first. Um, yeah, we're really close uh, with Jalen. Uh, first memory is playing AAU, team loaded with him. And uh, I forgot how exactly like one of the first times we met, but I just know that uh, our coach, Elvin Edmonds, for AAU, he used to call him a prima donna all the time because uh, he used to uh, get a little bit to get going. He's kind of like at his own pace. and uh, He's just like a really relaxed, chill dude. So it took him maybe like a couple minutes in the first half to get going. But uh, he's like, but once he got going, he, you know, he's a really good scorer. He's really smooth. Um, but for Team Loda, it's like one of those guys like dive, dive on loose balls, like really gritty type of dudes from the jump. So they didn't really understand how Jalen worked at first. But uh, yeah, that's, my, uh, yeah, that's our guy. Um, as soon as he saw the name pop up that we were playing us, he sent me the eye emojis, me and Cody did in a group chat. Uh, but now we got a really tight relationship. I still talk to him. I've been talking to him throughout the year. Um, yeah, that's my boy. So, you know, I got a lot of love for him. But, uh, you know, whenever we play, is you know, he can't be friends. Same, Cody, I mean, yeah. yeah, same thing. Uh, remember him from playing Team Loader. Uh, feels like forever ago, but, yeah. Um, I mean, he can, he's a pro, and uh, he's really, really good. Got good size. He's athletic. He can really play. Uh, can shoot the ball well. Um, 
I don't know. I think it's going to be really, really fun, and it's going to be really competitive. And, and we haven't really got to see him in a while. I think the last time we saw him was uh, going through the process for the NBA workouts and stuff like that. So um, it's been nice. We kept in touch throughout the season. And um, like Caleb said, he sent us a little text. So I know he's ready to compete, and I, I know he's looking forward to see us. But, you know, once we get on the court, all that goes out the window. Somebody's got to win. Okay, on the aisle there. And then we'll go up to the Alvia Trivia after. Chuck Schaffner from the Associated Press for Jazz and either Cody or Caleb. Uh, Jordan Caroline, just what kind of teammate is he? How, how is he to hang out with as a, as a friend? Something a little bit about his personality. Um, Jordan is personally, uh, I'm really close with Jordan, so uh, he's just really goofy. He's an incredible teammate. Um, you know, he's really just all about the team, uh, just trying to make sure everybody's good, trying to make sure, you know, morale is high. Uh, you know, he's the jokester on the team, him and Trey. Um, and, you know, he's just overall just a really fun guy to be around. Caleb? Uh, yeah, same thing, like Jazz, just going off Jazz, really good dude to be around. It's really funny. Uh, guys only kind of see him on the court. That he's just, you know, get after a type of dude, and, you know, really play angry type of guy. But off the court, you know, he, he's a good dude, man. Uh, you know, he's one of the best teammates, I, you know, I could have asked for. And, just really goofy, you know, like, like Jazz said, just brings a good vibe, good energy, and, uh, you know, a really good dude to be around. Couldn't ask for nobody better, honestly. Cody, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, something I would just add on to that is, like, when he's on the court, um, he's obviously looks mean, he's aggressive, but he's a lot more outgoing than people think. I know there's a lot of people that don't get to see the other side of him uh, rather than being on the court or what they see on TV, but he's really outgoing, he's funny. Um, Love having him around and things like this. I mean, he's always he's always a good time. We have a question on the left side. Yep. Scott Stiller, UPI. For the seniors, uh, how have your past NCAA tournament experiences? How that help you this week? And what's it like with your your last chance going around this time? Start with Caleb, then Cody. Um, always been in a tournament like this. You know, you it's always good to experience this, uh, no matter how it goes. You know, from previous times being here. Um, it just helps you with knowing that, you know, a main thing coming to this tournament is just keeping your composure. You just don't really know how, you know, how the crowd will be or, you know, how the game will go and anything like that because, you know, everyone's playing their best in, in, at this time of year. And uh, you, you can expect guys that you might not expect to be playing well can come out and be a spark for some other teams. And same thing for your team, guys who might have had a slow start to the year, you know, could be one of the biggest factors of, of advancing the tournament. So. Uh, it's one of those things that you just kind of expect the unexpected, or at least try your best to, and um, just try to keep a level head no matter how the game's going. Um, I think the biggest thing uh, from learning from my past experience is just kind of not making it as big, don't make it bigger than it actually is, uh, and just realizing it's, it's just another game and you've been playing basketball all season. I think sometimes when you, you build it up in your head and you kind of try to play different, you do things different, you approach it different, rather than just doing the same thing you've been doing all season. Because at the end of the day, we're all going out there with the same teammates, same staff, and you're playing the same way. And I think it's just having that consistent approach so you don't um, try to do too much. And um, I think a lot of our experience and how old our guys has a lot, that's going to play a big part in how we do consistency-wise. And just having that experience on our side and understanding that consistency is the biggest thing for us. And I think having that mindset and that approach will really uh, benefit us in the long run. Had a question on the aisle on the left side. There you go. Hayes Gardner, Ames Tribune. Um, this is for the Martin Twins. Um, you're on a team with a lot of transfers. You're, you're transferred yourself, a lot of experience. What's it like being on a team with so much experience and, and so many players who came from, from other schools? Start with Caleb, then Cody. Um, like, like you said, experience in college basketball is everything. You know, I, I kind of I learned that quickly my freshman year at, um, at NC State. And, getting to play the tournament. We actually got to go to Sweet 16 that year, too. So I got to see how much experience played a role in, um, you know, in advancing this type of tournament and uh, just in, in just winning games in general. But uh, one thing I will say, like, you know, for our team, even though we do have a lot of experience, it's, it's some, a lot of guys' first time in this, in this tournament. So um, when it comes to this tournament, we don't really have that much experience. And, and things are played a little bit differently. And, guys, you know, and guys or other teams play a lot better. So. Uh, it's one of those things we're still kind of learning. You know, we're learning, learning on the fly. There's a lot of guys first time here. So, um, you know, it's one of those things we're going to have to, 
grow up and, 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 and learn, you know, learn really quickly, you know, how things are going to go from the tip and, you know, you don't really have too much time to prepare. So uh, just trying to, you know, I think our staff does a great job in preparing us the best of their ability and they do a really great job of um, letting us know, you know, kind of the realm of things and what's going to go on. And uh, I think we'll be prepared, you know, really well for so. Um, I think uh, experience is going to be really, really good for us. You know, we have a, a lot of older guys that's been in a, a lot of games, played in a lot of games. And um, I think, you know, playing in obviously a tournament like this is huge, but I think it kind of ties back to just being consistent and having the same approach and just understanding that it's basketball at the end of the day. Um, because, I mean, our team and our staff approaches every game like it's a championship. So us being in a situation and environment like this, obviously, uh, there's a lot more eyes and a lot more people watching, but at the end of the day, we're, we're playing basketball. And um, it's, it's a lot different from having a freshman who's been in there and then throwing them in the fire and experience like this and having older guys that's played basketball for a long time and had, have, a lot of under, uh, have a lot of games under their belt and then throwing them into an environment like this. It's nothing new. It's, it's basketball at the end of the day. And um, we just you know play like we've been playing all season and just try to figure a way to get it done. We have less than five minutes in this interview session. Stay on the aisle. Chuck Schaffner from the AP for Jazz. How is it for you coming into a new program, and have you been able to uh, fill the expectations that you had for yourself? Um, it's been a really fun experience, honest, uh, honestly. It's just, you know, I had a lot of questions coming in, obviously, and, you know, a lot of doubts. But, you know, just, you know, through working hard and staying in the gym, you know, talking to my teammates, talking to Cody, Caleb, Jordan, you know, guys who have obviously been through it. Um, it's really just, you know, an eye opener, um, you know, especially, you know, being in a tournament like this, um, I asked a lot of questions, you know, not as of recent, but, you know, during my sit out year and throughout the season, I would ask Cody and Caleb and, uh, JC a lot of questions about, you know, their experience through the tournament and what it's like. And, you know, kind of like what Cody and Caleb were saying, we do have a lot of older guys and, you know, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, for the guys who, like me, who it's, it's our first time, it's important for us, you know, to learn as much as we can and try to get that experience through talking to them instead of, you know, because we didn't have the, you know, the opportunity to be in the tournament ourselves. So a lot of it just comes from, you know, uh, being curious and asking those hard questions in order to really figure out what it's like. We've got a question here in the second row. Cody, obviously this team doesn't have like one big time score, but they have eight, uh, six guys who score at least eight points per game. I guess you're kind of the defensive anchor for this team. When you look at this team, who is the guy that you guys have to stop, kind of the head of the snake, uh, when you look to, to defend them? Um, I mean, honestly, you kind of said it yourself. There's not one person that you can really key on because um, they all score the ball very well and they pat, you know, they share the ball and um, they do a great job of actually everyone getting to touch, everyone being able to have that green light. So that's what kind of makes them really dangerous. So there's not really one person that we can really key on. It's going to be a team effort on our part. There's not going to be one person that we're going to be able to single out and try to double team or whatever the case is. I mean, we're just going to have to play. And uh, a lot of them are really, really great scorers. And they can go one-on-one -on -one ball a lot of the times or whatever. So it's going to be our job um, as a group and a whole to be able to help each other out at the same time. And just re and realistically, just have the same principles we've had all season. Um, when it comes to playing defense and, um, you know, they do a great job rebounding and things like that. I mean, they're a really great team, so we're just going to have to make sure that we're prepared when it comes to them and their offensive game. And I know they play a little bit of slower pace, so we have to make sure we play all 30 seconds and make sure we end it off with a rebound. We have time for one question. Go back to the second row here. Uh, Chris Murray, Nevada Sportsnet. Jazz, uh, a very good defensive team in Florida, top 15 in the nation. What do they do so well on that side of the ball uh, that have given you know opponents in the SEC some troubles? Um, obviously, you know you have to credit Hayes, um, one of the top shot blockers in Florida history. Um, so you know he's he's down there, and then you also have to add in the fact that they really do a good job at packing the paint. And you know for them to hold teams to I think it was what 63 points a game, and for them to be in the SEC, that's that's a major accomplishment. And it's, you know, it's just really important that, you know, we key in on what we can do and figure out what we can do to score because, you know, that, that's what makes them who they are. They play defense and they really make sure that, you know, they crash the boards, they rebound, and they defend at a high level. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll have uh, Coach up here shortly. And again, the Nevada locker room will be open until 3.15. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
pleased to uh, welcome to the uh, dais from the West Region, head coach Eric uh, Musselman, the Nevada Wolfpack, number seven seed. They're playing number 10 seed Florida in a 550 first round matchup tomorrow, marking the first meeting ever between the schools. Nevada tied a school single season record with 29 wins for the second consecutive year. They will be making uh, their ninth appearance in the NCAA tournament. Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, uh, we're excited uh, to play a 40-minute game tomorrow against uh, a really well-coached Florida team that has a lot of weapons, and, and I think our guys are in a good physical sh uh, spot right now, and, um, you know, we look forward to the challenge. Questions for the head coach? Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder on the left aisle there. Uh, Chuck Schaffner from the AP. Uh, so you're undefeated in the non-conference, beat some good teams, and then you go to New Mexico and just get thumped. How did you turn that around so quickly, and what was the mindset there? Well, we did get thumped, and it happens in college basketball. It happens in the NBA. It happens in the NFL. It happens in college football. Uh, that's the one game that we felt like, uh, you know, we weren't in the game, so to speak. Uh, our other losses, we felt like, couple missed shots, block out here, we could have won. Uh, but that was the one game we played really bad. And, and uh, you know, I think for our guys, they did a phenomenal job. There was a lot of preseason hype. And our guys did an incredible job in non-conference. Uh, we got to conference play, uh, played in a lot of sold out buildings. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, been a learning experience all year for all of us because you know, court stormings has kind of been the thing the last year and a half when we've lost. It, it happened last year at Wyoming, and, um, you know, some of our guys, the coaching staff, it's all, you know, it's been new to have that. But I, but I think our guys to be 29 and 4, and, and look, everybody in college basketball has a goal. How do you get to the NCAA tournament? It doesn't matter if you're coaching in the Big Ten or you're playing in the ACC. It's how do you get to this tournament? And we're here, and we're looking forward to – uh, playing a really, really good basketball team tomorrow. We have a question on the right side, back row. Yeah, Matthew Bain, USA Today Sports. Um, Jordan Caroline was telling us he feels like a 10 out of 10, very fresh. Um, just how crucial were those six full days off of rest for, for what the injury he was dealing with? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Jordan's, you know, in a, in, in a great spot from a physical standpoint. And, uh, you know, he was held out, like I said, after the Mountain West for precautionary reasons because of the fact that uh, he did feel like, you know, he had a lingering uh, injury. And, and, and so we felt that was the best decision at the time because um, we certainly would not have wanted to come into this situation uh, minus a player of his caliber. So um, not always easy decisions, but, but you know, I think as a, as a coach, as a program, um, you got to make the best decision for a, for a student athlete. Um, and then you, you always think short term and long term goals and you think about, um, you know, what's in the best interest of, of everybody. And, and so that was in the best interest. Yes. Would you go up, yeah, on the left side, stay there and then we'll go to you in the plan. Um, continuing on, Jordan, what has he met your program, you know, through his career and the, and the players were talking about how he's kind of goofy, maybe keeps people loose and, you know, how's he, and how important has that been? Yeah, I think Jordan's been a, you know, he's one of the first players that I recruited the first year um, at Nevada. We, you know, we, he sat out and it was a player development year and uh, some of the things that we talked about on his recruiting visit were how do we improve his perimeter skills, uh, how do we improve him as a three-point shooter, um, you know, he came to us as an undersized five man, five man at his prior uh, university, and, and um, this year he, you know, he's he's been a small forward for us. Which there's not many players in the country. Last year, he at this, you know, 24 hours from now, he was guarding Mo Bamba um, and fronting Mo Bamba at his size and and battling for rebounds. And now he's a small forward for us. So he's made a dramatic shift in his game. Uh, from a versatility standpoint, as is Cody Martin. A, a, you know, a year ago, Cody Martin, a year and a half ago, was our starting power forward. Now he's our starting point guard. So there's, uh, you know, I'm really proud of the development that a lot of our guys have had in, in a very short time frame. Third row on the left side. 
Hayes Gardner, uh, Ames Tribune. <clears throat> your team has several transfers. Um, why have you made that a cornerstone of your time in Nevada? You know, I think number one, there's, it's the you know the nature of of our uh, society. Um, my son played on about 15 different AAU teams, and guys are unhappy with their roles. They go to a new AAU team. Guys are playing at three and four different high schools now. Um, when many of us in this room were growing up, nobody transferred from any college, not a student and not student athletes, and 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 it's. You know, right now there's, there's already 300 guys in the, I think 320 some guys in the portal as of this morning, um, and we, we're still playing basketball. So uh, I don't just think it's Nevada. I think there's, a, you know, there's, you look at some great historical programs that now um, have grad transfers or transfers, and uh, but it was, you know, we had to find a niche. We wanted to try to. Um, be as good as we could, as quick as we could, but yet have sustainability. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we took kind of an NBA format. Um, we looked at high school guys kind of as draft picks, and we looked at, we looked at transfers as, as like an, an NBA free agent as we tried to put the pieces together. And, and sometimes it gets lost, the, the freshmen that we brought in, because Lindsey Drew and Cameron Oliver were were part of our first class, and they were freshmen, and we rolled with them and played them a ton of minutes. Um, so, I, you know, but certainly our roster is full of transfers. Still have about four minutes left in this interview session. Any other questions? No other questions, Coach. We'll dismiss you. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Nevada practice begins at 325. We're at Michigan up here at 330.
Mic check, mic check. Testing audio, one, two, three, four, five. Test, 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 one, two, one, two. Mic check, mic check. Okay, testing audio, one, two, three. Testing one, two, one, two in the truck. Testing audio for the truck. Testing audio, one, two, three, four. Hello, truck. Test, test.
Pleased to have with us on the dais student athletes, University of Michigan, to my far left, freshman forward Iggy Brazakis, in the middle, Charles Matthews, senior guard, and to my immediate left, Xavier Simpson, a junior guard. At this time, we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder. Back row on the uh, left aisle, then we'll come to you, ma'am, next. Riley Corcoran, Montana Radio. What was your guys' first reaction uh, to seeing Montana again in the selection show when you guys just got done playing? And I guess your first shot thoughts. We're going to start with Iggy, work our way, uh, Charles, and then we'll have uh, Xavier. Um, I wasn't here last year, but, you know, this is really exciting for me. Uh, any team we would have played, I would have been just as excited for anyone else, but uh, we're not going to take anyone for granted. We're going to be ready to go and, you know, I'm just excited for this opportunity. Yeah, you know, it was definitely funny first saying that. He was like, what a coincidence out of all of these teams. We end up playing the same game we did uh, last year, but they're a very talented team. Um, so are we, so we're excited to play them tomorrow. Yeah, extremely talented team. Um, majority of the players came back, so I think it'd be a good opportunity for both of the teams and just excited to be able to have the opportunity to play. Ma'am, on the left side, yeah, right side here. There you go. LJ Dawson with the Kaiman. Um, coming off the loss with Michigan State this past week, is there any areas that you guys are really looking forward to being able to work on in this game on Thursday? Again, we'll start with Iggy, work our way over to Xavier. I feel like we got a lot better as a team in the Big Ten tournament. You know, it didn't go the way we wanted it to, but uh, I feel like we learned a lot of different things. And, you know, now we're, I feel like we're moving the ball really well. We're locked in on the defensive end, and I feel like you know, we're getting better and better, and uh, you'll see the best of us in this tournament. Yeah, and uh, our approach right now is really just, you know, take it in with a clean slate, um, try to forget about that loss. We understand that we want to win that game, but we can't let that lose us another game in this tournament. So, like I said, we just got to be fresh-minded and uh, ready to take on the next task. The game is in the past. Our focus is Montana. Now we're just trying to get better every single day. We're going to go on the left side. Okay. Uh, Danny Lahan from the Des Moines Register. Uh, this is for the upperclassmen. Um, based off the run from last year, what's the biggest takeaway that, that you guys take from that three-week experience to trying to make sure that y'all are in the right frame of mind yourselves and then passing that on to someone like Iggy who is going to be experiencing all this for the first time? Sure. Uh, you definitely, um, you definitely got to take everything one game at a time. Um, that's one thing I did notice from last year. And, uh, you got to have a little bit of luck. You know, we was fortunate enough, JP hit a crazy shot to continue our run, but then uh, just be locked in and stay in the moment. Uh, I feel like the teams that's having the most fun and enjoying the moment each and every night, those are the teams that, you know, had the most success around this time. I would definitely say uh, until the young guys on my team, just enjoy the moment. Enjoy every single day, practice, uh, the media, just everything leading up to it because it goes by quick. And uh, last year we were so focused on winning, I don't think we got a chance to actually enjoy um, being in the NCAA tournament which is not fortunate for every team. Question in the front row on the aisle. Yeah, Charles, you were on such a great shooting and scoring run before you hurt your ankle, and, and, and you try to get back in the groove in the Big Ten tournament. Where are you with that? And, and, and talk about that challenge. Yeah, uh, it's a process. Um, I understand injuries are a part of the game. Uh, like I said, uh, there's no pressure on me, though. I have so many great teammates around me where I can kind of ease myself back into the game, back into the flow of things. But um, I'm confident in my abilities. You know, I know I'll be back to where I was before, prior to this injury. And like I said, right now I'm just trying to help the team win whatever role that's needed. Question on the left aisle, then we'll come over here on the right side. Hayes Gardner, uh, the Ames Tribune. Uh, Charles, at Kentucky, you were playing like 10 minutes a game. Now you're playing 30 minutes a game for, for a really good team. Is this kind of what you envisioned when you transferred uh, to Michigan? Uh, that was the goal, but you know, I knew that I was about to put the work in and um, earn my coaching staff trust to allow me to be out there for that, you know, amount of time. Uh, but now, like I said, it's not even so much about Kentucky. I've been gone forever from there. I'm just trying to get back to where we was last year and put the icing on the cake now. On the right side, go ahead. Uh, we'll Kyle, Kyle Hansen from the Missoulian newspaper. Uh, Charles, last year against Montana, you had 20 points and 11 rebounds. Do you approach this rematch similarly, knowing that this is a similar group with Montana, or is it a little bit different for you this time? 
No, I, honestly, I just play to win every game I play. Um, I never go in there with the mindset of I got to get X amount, of, X amount of points, X amount of rebounds, X amount of assists. It never really mattered to me. I've always been the type of guy that throughout the floor game, I heat up if that's needed from the team. So uh, I'm just trying to play to win. And last year, we had some early foul troubles, and I knew I needed to do more on the um, offensive load and as far as rebound load as well. Sean Rainey with SWX Montana. I asked Duncan and Mo this question last year, but uh, do you guys know anything about the state of Montana at all? Just curious. <laughs> I'm from Canada, so uh, <laughs> I definitely don't know uh, too much about Montana. So I'm going to pass it on to Charles. It's on the West Coast. No. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stay on the right side. She had a question. Yeah. So Montana runs a pretty heavy guard offense, and they're also a lot shorter than you guys. Is that going to change the way you play, or is there anything that you're excited to change when you face them Thursday? Um, uh, we always have a specific game plan for each team we play. Uh, so depending on what they have, we kind of adjust our you know, offense, defense. But... Uh, every single game we, we play hard, you know, we, we never let down for anyone. We don't take anyone for granted. So we're going to come into this game like it's a national championship game. And that's that's the mindset we all got to have. And uh, I feel like if we have that mindset, we'll be fine. Yeah, like I said, we don't really take anybody for granted. Um, we understand that they're a smaller team, but that possesses strength for them as well. You know, they have speed as well, uh, multiple guys that can create for themselves and others. So they're going to present some challenges as well. But I feel we're going to respond to it. They're definitely going to present some challenges. Um, good guard play, great team, great coaching staff. So I'm excited for the game. And uh, we just have to do our best to contain them. We have about five minutes left in this session. Any other questions? We don't have any other questions. We're going to dismiss you guys. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. We have Coach Beeline here shortly. Michigan locker room will be open until uh, 4 p.m.
this time, we'd uh, like to welcome to the dais uh, Michigan head coach uh, John Beeline. The Wolverines have been to the tournament nine, time, nine times and coaches uh, 12 seasons uh, at Michigan, including four uh, Sweet 16 appearances, two Final Fours. This will be the 24th NCAA tournament appearance in program history. Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, we're thrilled to be here. Th I love, I just told to Ward Manuel, our AD, I love being in these venues where it, it means a lot to Des Moines to have you have a tournament like this uh, and, and so much interest coming into this area. So my first time here, looks like a wonderful place to live. Uh, looks like we're gonna have great excitement here and I, you can guarantee that Michigan's excited to be a part of the, this round of 60, I guess it'll be 64 by the time we play. This time we're open up for questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone holder to you. Front row, left side. Uh, Danny Lawhon, Des Moines Register. Uh, John, you know, the players will be, the players will know that it's Montana again. Everybody's probably talked and asked about that already. But from a coach's perspective, you know, you've got to balance the confidence that you have in your guys with the fear of, of any complacency that they might have in a first round game. Do you have any extra worries that you have to guard against knowing that this is the same way that the road that went so well last year is, is starting again? How do you make sure that that whole deja vu factor doesn't make your players complacent? Well, I hope it doesn't go the way it did last year. They're ahead of us 10 nothing to start the game. And they have, they have virtually everybody back. I mean, they're missing two of their big guys, and I don't know if Aycock is going to play. We hear he might. So they got, we're, we're, we got three guys that played in this game, any type of minutes at all, right? So we, we're a little bit brand new uh, to playing in this type of um, a, a, a game with major minutes. So, no, our guys, they know Montana is even, even better than they were last year. And like we say, we're, we're up by three at half, and we're very fortunate to win by 13 points. So it wasn't some 30, 40 point game. They're, they're a good team. Every team playing the tournament is champion. And now with the way they have played without their big guy out, it really present, is going to present problems for a lot of high major teams because they're going to be a spread you out with all guards. And that is that can really work really well. I'm going to go to the right side. Uh, Kyle Hansen with the Missoulian. John, uh, to piggyback off that 10-0 run that Montana started with last year, do you think that probably works to your advantage this year, knowing that the players, a lot of these yeah. guys like Charles and Xavier, yeah. won't take them lightly this time around? No, I think we know that, and I think that we, we've been really good at that so far this year. I don't think we've gone into a game. You know, you have your, your games early. You have your games where um, you beat the team already, right? And we've been able to really respond uh, we usually respond pretty well after losses too, and we had a tough one Sunday. So uh, we've been good. We've been really good at that. I hope that that trend continues. But I, I think our kids, uh, we, we our, our kids are, are sometimes they're unique to other teams. I think they get all that part right that we don't look past anybody. We're ready to play every day. Going to stay on the right side. Coach Riley Corcoran, Montana Radio. Th last year, Montana was the only team in the tournament that had the same starting lineup for every game. This year, they've had to evolve in and out with the co being out. What would you say the biggest differences are with this team as you've watched them throughout the year on film? Is it, it, co, is that how you say it? I'm sorry for no, doing that. Um, say just, what was the last part? Just how have you seen this team evolve? I guess the biggest differences from when you watch Montana on film preparing this year compared to last year's game. I think having, having Dorsey and the other transfer, I'm forgetting his name right now, his name is uh, Emmanuel, right? That's the huge difference right now, that they have all that great experience. I mean, those two guard, I mean, between Aguine and, uh, and number 14, who is uh, Rory, right? Those two guys, those two guys are like Big Ten, Big Ten guards, or Pac-10 guards. They're big, uh, and now you add those two shooters around them, and everything changed. So this is like a legitimate team that it can have a Cinderella run, and uh, they're terrific. Got a terrific coach. What he's been there for the first five years, he's been to the NCAA tournament. I mean, they, this is they're becoming quite a traditional uh, NCAA team, and we're going to have to play well. This is a time. There's not a team in the country right now goes out and had a bad game can expect to win. It's not going to happen. Stay on the right side, and we're we're on our way up. Coach, you've been to this tournament representing a, a kind of smaller school before and so much about the experience and, and the newness. So I think a lot of the, the Grizz fan base was kind of bummed that it was Michigan again. One, because you guys are really good, and two, because it's kind of the, the yeah. rematch. So maybe from the perspective of a, a smaller school getting to the tournament, 
your thoughts on having it be a, a repeat matchup? No, I, you know, knowing how in that level, how hard it is to win those three or four games in a row and get to the tournament, I don't think people really care. I mean, for me, you know, when, whether it was Canisius, whether it was Richmond, right? We made the tournament, darn it. We were just happy to be there. And I remember having this bold statement as, you know, we played Utah with, with uh, uh, Rick McGerris and, and Doliak and Keith Van Horn and uh, they're, they're, they had like four pros on the team, and I said, oh, that's a great matchup for us. Well, we lost like 70 to 40 or something, but I mean, you're just excited to get here, and then everything is, everything is positive from this point on. So I don't think they, and anybody said, oh, it's Michigan. They said, oh, it's Michigan. That's a great, another great opportunity for us to have a great, have a great win. LJ Dawson with the Montana Kaiman. Um, the Montana Grizzlies are a heavily defensive program, and you guys are one of the top defensive programs in the nation. What are the benefits of having a first game matchup with two defensively heavy teams? Well, we, uh, you know, that's one constant you have in basketball is to have a good defensive team. And uh, we had, there's been times this year we've had a great defensive team. We're going to have to be great defensively against them. This is one of the most efficient offensive teams in the country, right, and, and a leader in a lot of different categories. So. Their ability to shoot the three ball is a really big challenge for us. And, and their ability to, you know, they're a downhill team. And, and they, they, their fast break is tremendous. So it's going to be a big challenge for us. Balance this off. Any questions on the left side at all? Okay, we got <coughs> Pat. Yeah, Pat Borzy with the New York Times. Uh, John, I want to just kind of ask you about the, the merits and pitfalls of, of winning a conference tournament. You won the conference tournament last year, got all the way to the finals, and the uh, you know, this year you're going to try to go as far as you can without winning the conference tournament. Um, I'm wondering if losing in a uh, losing in the conference tournament can kind of scare your team in a productive way, so that they're not too confident going into into this venue. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, as long as I've been coaching, and I've been coaching a long time, had a lot of wins, but I had a whole lot of losses. And after every loss, there seems to be this bounce in our team in a positive direction. It's you got to go through a painful 24 hours, but um, when you I. I, I there's been a few times that I've been lost in the championship game, right? West Virginia was one of them. They had to turn around and play right away. I, I think that uh, b because of the Big Ten schedule and the travel and the, the amount of time that we're playing, I think we're pretty resilient to that. But it is three games in three days. I, I know a very good coach, a great Hall of Fame coach, who once said, if you're going to lose in a tournament, lose on Friday, right? Don't lose Saturday or Sunday. Well, we messed that up. So it's it, but we had Monday off. We've tried to get ready for this great team and still stay fresh, and um, so it's 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 all part of it, you know. And and our our kids are are resilient. I think uh, Montana's got one more day rest. I think I believe, but we just get this is this is this time. You can't worry about being tired or anything. We got to manage that and just go play. But hopefully, we'll have the same edge, right? That we that we've had in the last couple of years in the first rounds after winning. I think we'll have more of an edge, hopefully. We have uh, five minutes left in this session here. Any other questions for the coach? Okay, coach, you get off. Right. Congratulations, Thanks, best of luck tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mike. Our next session will start at 4.15 with Florida.
tasting one, two, three, four. Tasting one, two, three, four. Anybody know where a good restaurant is in Des Moines? The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Give me three things on Montana. Huckleberry beer. Avenisa lives in Whitefish. My two sisters are uh, over there visiting. My two sisters are visiting me. I'm good friends with Bill Landerty. He's a diehard Royals fan. Start or commercial? I uh, I was the SID at Drake when Rob Ash was the coach, and then I took over Montreal. So I knew Dave Guthrie. Well, uh, Joe Glenn, I knew.
testing one, two, three, four. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. The time is four o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? Hello, hello, hello. Today, 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 I consider myself, myself, the greatest, greatest, greatest day, day, day in my, my, my life, life, life.
going to start our going to start our next session with Florida here in a couple minutes. This line, we'd like to uh, welcome the student athletes from uh, University of Florida. To my far left, we have Jalen Hudson, a senior guard. And to my immediate left, we have center, senior Kavarius Hayes. At this time, we're opening up for questions for our student athletes. This is a 15 minute segment, and at the same time, the Florida locker room is open. If you have a question, please raise your hand, give your name, affiliation. We have a microphone holder. Okay. On the left side, the aisle. Mike Stephenson, KOLO in Reno. Jalen, I'm curious what it's like for you to match up with the uh, Martin Twins. Obviously, you guys go way back. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, we, I actually won the last matchup against them uh, when they were at NC, NC State and I was at Virginia Tech. So I know they're going to be super um, competitive. And um, obviously, I consider them family. So I'm just excited to honestly see them again. I haven't seen them in a long time. So um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Other questions for our student athletes? Okay, we're gonna keep it on the left side in the aisle here, and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, uh, Danny Lahan from the Des Moines Register. Uh, just looking at the season, I mean, there have been any number of times in which you guys could have really gone into a mental bad place. You know, really roller coaster, up and down, big wins, frustrating losses. How have you guys been resilient enough to get here and? With this fresh start of the tournament, even though it's one and done, what kind of, of new energy is here for you guys as you try to go make a run like any team could? We'll start with Jalen first. Um, all these postseason games are, are considered really new seasons. Um, so right now we're zero and zero. I don't even really count the SEC tournament um, for now. So I'm just excited to um, kind of get our feet wet again in another postseason game. Um, as far as the season, uh, we're not really looking back at all um, during the season. Uh, obviously, we had some, some ups and downs, but um, like you said, it's a, it's a kind of a fresh start now, um, especially it being the NCAA tournament and being the most important time of the season. So just looking forward to getting our feet wet and, and competing and, and playing hard and could be some of our last games uh, playing with the Florida across our chest. So just excited to get out there and, and compete. Um, Various, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just want to say, like, mostly we've been able to stick together, you know, by drawing to one, close to one another. You know, um, kind of relying on each other as far as like moving forward throughout all the frustrating losses, you know, um, rough times. I feel like we just want to be able to become, overcome all of that because we all have like positive mindset. You know, going what Coach says about, you know, um, learning from the losses and then even from our wins, just kind of kind of keep building on a lot of the positive and fixing the things that we do wrong. And I feel like, like you said, it's a new season, 0-0, zero, zero, coming out with the right mindset and just playing the way we play. Stay on the left there. Go ahead. Just curious what each of you guys think of the Wolf Pack. Uh, there's going to be several guys on each side with a lot of experience in this tournament, so it could be a fun matchup. Start with Jalen first. They're a very um, experienced team. Um, obviously, they had a lot of success. Um, they are a mid-major team, though. I don't think they've seen maybe um, a team like us in, in a long time. I know they had a, a matchup with USC, and um, I think it was uh, another um, high-major team they kind of had trouble with. Um, so I'm just excited to kind of to, to kind of bring our SEC kind of vibe to the to the game and see how they kind of can match up with that. Um, obviously, they're a really good team. I know the Martin Twins very well. Very good players played at a very high level in the ACC at NC State, and um, they've always been good. Um, I don't know too many of the other players, but looking at the scouting report, obviously they can play, and a bunch of them have transferred as well. So I, I think it'll be a really good matchup for for both teams. Very um, yeah, like you said, um, this team like a lot of experience as far as like. You know, a lot of seniors and transfers. Um, it'd be interesting to go up against them. I know, like, they have very talented players, like, as far as from the perimeter down to the post. I feel like it'll be a 
a good way to test test our strengths and some of our weaknesses right now. And um and just kinda given all we got, you know, the Martin twins are very good and they got a lot of three point shooters. We're just gonna um, stick to what we do, play our principles. Other questions for our student athletes? Kavarius, I want to ask you a question. You're playing some of your best basketball this season right now, the last 10 games, including the SEC tournament. You're averaging over 11 points. What do you attribute that to? Um, Stay in the course. I feel like um, just working on it a lot, just like trying to get shots just about every day, anytime I can. You know, it's kind of starting to like show and pay off a little more, like building up the confidence to actually, you know, hit the mid-range shot like I did in um, one of our games. And just kind of keep building on that. I feel like, you know, I always play hard in every game. So it's like that's never gonna that's never gonna go away. I'm just gonna keep building on that. Other questions? Still have five minutes. We've got a question here. Go ahead, sir. Chris Harry, FloridaGators.com. Kavarius, how do you think that um, do you think there's something about this team playing better given now the rotation has shrunk a little bit? You know, you guys, all five starters averaged over 30 minutes a game last week in the SEC tournament, and Mike says you all are playing your best basketball right now. Is there a coincidence there, or is, is this the best lineup for you guys right now? Um, I feel like I owe a lot, we owe a lot that's like the chemistry, is like how well we are with each other, like off the court. It's finally starting to transition to on the court, understand like, each other's play style and like the playing around, like all of our strengths. And then even then, you know, our bench is actually, you know, really good. When they come in, they like keep up the energy. And I feel like that's what we what we do very well is like kind of keep the energy going. Like when we have like a lot of energy in our games, we tend to, you know, snowball off of that. Whether it's like even when something goes wrong, we like can band together. Everybody has like a the right mindset as in as far as like we all want to win. And the starting five are the ones who we kinda like come out and set this tone, you know, as strong as we can and we build off of that. Other questions? If we don't have any other questions, thank you very much, guys. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. And the Florida locker room is still open. We'll have Coach White up here shortly.
We will start our next uh, press conference with the Florida coach here in less than a minute. And again, want to make these announcements. There's uh, satellite coordinates for this press conference with Coach White. Galaxy 17 slash 18K, slot B. The downlink is 12055.5 vertical. Please silence your phone. There's no flash photography or video recording with your iPhone or tablet. Have a question, please raise your hand. We'll have a microphone holder come over. Please give your name and affiliation. And again, why uh, Coach White is talking, the uh, Florida locker room will be open until 4.30. Florida will be on the court practicing at 4.55. We'll conclude today with Montana uh, student athletes at 5 o'clock, followed by their head coach. to welcome to the dais uh, Florida head coach Mike White. The Gators are appearing in the NCAA tournament for the third straight season and 20th time in school history. Florida is the number 10 seed in the West region. They will meet number 7 seed Nevada in a 5.50 uh, tip-off local time here tomorrow. Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Thank you. Great to be here. Appreciate you all's time. Um, exciting to play in the NCAA tournament, as always. It's a uh, Anything can happen in this tournament, and um, our guys are excited to be here. We're coming off an SEC tournament in which uh, we won a really close one and lost a really close one, but uh, feel like we're playing our best basketball of the year, and we certainly hope that continues against the team in Nevada who's coming off a great tournament in their own right a year ago in this tournament and uh, has had another terrific season. Um, a highly ranked team all year, uh, a team who uh, we're going to have to play really well against to have a chance. I'm excited about the opportunity. This time we'll take questions. Please raise your hand and uh, we'll have a microphone holder. Okay, right here. Uh, Denny O'Grady with the Carroll Daily Times Herald in Carroll, Iowa. Coach, what are going to be the keys to beating uh, your opponent tomorrow and what's your biggest concerns? And have you ever been to Iowa before? Yeah, I'll, I'll um, answer the first ones first because I might ramble on the second one. Uh, keys to the game. Uh, Defensive transition is, is very important against these guys. A lot of things are important against these guys. Um, live ball turnovers and floor balance, it, it's all the same category. Uh, we're coming off a game in which we would have given ourselves a better chance against the Auburn Tigers to potentially play for an SEC championship on Sunday if we didn't have the 19 turnovers uncharacteristically that we did. Uh, we've got to be better than that against Nevada in a similar type uh, switching uh, pressuring, denying of passes type defense. Um, isolation defense has got to be huge. These guys, uh, they, can, they can go get it. They're great at drawing fouls. Uh, they're great at playing downhill. Um, and then for us, uh, not only specifically to these guys, but they, they, are, they are terrific defensively. But uh, for us, going in every game, um, Offensively, we got to figure out how we're going to score. How we're going to score, and, and, and these guys uh, defensively are very, very efficient. Um, again, um, we've got to value the ball at a high level, um, and those are just a, f a few keys, a few factors. But there's a bunch that they. This is a team that um, is as old as anybody in the country. They've done a great job with with balancing that and, and managing that that roster. Um, they are as big as anybody in the country, an incredibly long lineup. Uh, they've got a good mix um, of, of, of shooters and handlers. They seem to have a bunch of guys that can pass, dribble, and shoot it. Um, and and they, 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 they go at you. Um, uh, Coach obviously knows how to go at you with his background in terms of um, picking on certain guys at different spots on the floor and putting guys in position to be successful offensively. And then they, they're, they're tough, they're physical, 
They battle you. Uh, they're, they're really good. Have I been to Iowa? Uh, first through fourth grade, I lived in Dubuque. Attended St. Columkill's Elementary, as we just talked about, behind the curtain. Um, fun time in my life and all my siblings' lives. We loved it here. My father was the athletic director at Loris College, right down the road. It was a great time. Other questions here on the aisle, left side? Uh, Danny Lahan, Des Moines Register. The, the, the whole roller coaster word is a really horrible cliche, but apparent to this team, you know, it, it, it might actually be something that close to fits. There's been a lot of chances for the team to really get down on itself, up points, down points, losing streaks, winning streaks, following those. Yeah. I, I, how, has, how has the resiliency of this team impressed you to get to where you guys are today? Very much so. It, it's been a really odd year. Um, this team was 12 and 11. Went through losing streaks, winning streaks. We've been through different guys starting. We've been through seniors going off, seniors having slumps, freshmen trying to figure it out, freshmen leading us to victories. Um, it's, it's, it's been unique to say the least. Have, we've had several opportunities, uh, having lost some very close games to lose interest, if you will. Um, lose a little bit of fight, um, but instead, you know, it was about the next practice, the next play, the next timeout, the next film session, um, and, 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 and obviously won our share down the stretch, um, playing our best basketball of the year, won enough close ones. You wish we could have back some of those close ones that we lost and we might be sitting here not having to play Nevada. Um, that said, you know, it, it, it speaks to, um, you said it, resiliency, toughness, um, Character, you know, we, we have our flaws as a team, but collectively this team's got a lot of character in that we just, we kept plugging and kept working and found a way. We found a way in and now anything can happen. Stay on the left side. Mike Stevenson from KOLO in Reno, Nevada. Coach, I'm curious, Nevada and you guys both have a lot of experience uh, on this stage. What have you guys learned from the past couple of years uh, about what it takes to succeed uh, on this stage? Uh, sure, I, th I think um, I, the last thing I said was anything can happen, and I'll, I'll stick to that. Just we know everyone's got a clean slate, and um, there, there have been 10 seeds that have made big runs in past NCAA tournaments. Heck, there was an 11 seed that we're very familiar with that came in our place last year and, and beat us on our home court and ended up going to a Final Four in Loyola, who was an 11 seed. Um, that said, just like the SEC tournament, you go into that tournament, you go into this tournament, you can make a lot of noise. How many can we win? Who would we play next if none of that even matters? This is about the first possession against Nevada, really locking in on these guys, a scouting report, uh, film session tonight, the next film session tomorrow, trying to get a great shot again versus stifling defense, trying to get a stop, trying to get your second stop. That's it, playing in the moment, moving on to the next play, just, just playing the game, that locking in on the Wolfpack, hopefully, we're competitive enough to wear down the stretch. We've got a shot, and that's it. Any other questions for the coach? Go back again. Just really quick, I hate to be that guy, but I'm a local, Nevada as opposed to Nevada. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like well, nails on a chocolate. Am I butchering it? So, yeah, Nevada is what we well, always you, hear, but it's Nevada. It's I'm Nevada. So, not Nevada, yeah. I'm how, sorry. How, what, what if you pronounce the last A at I'm the I'm just end? trying to Nevada. help out another mic here. No? No. Nah, Nevada. Okay. It's kind of like how Gonzaga always gets that. It's Gonzaga. How do you say tomato? That's, that's true. Or like Creek get it and right. Crick. Yeah, I lived in Montana. A little different, yeah. <laughs> Just trying to help out another mic, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Any other questions? We'll take some tips during the game tomorrow as well. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you very much, Coach. Best of luck tomorrow. Thanks, guys.
Is that Aruba or Jamaica? Is that Aruba or Jamaica?
getting ready for our final uh, session of the day with uh, Montana Grizzlies. We'll have student athletes at 5 o'clock, followed by the head coach at 5.15. During this time, from 5 to 5.30, the Montana locker room will be open. Just some reminders. No uh, live video recording either with your iPhone, your tablet, no flash photography. If you have a question, please give your name, affiliation. Our microphone holders will uh, come to you. Please make sure you silence your phones. We have 15 minutes with the student athletes, followed by 15 minutes with the head coach. Satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17 slash 18K, slot B. The downlink, 12055.5 vertical. Thank you. Montana's scheduled practice is uh, 540 to 620 tonight. This time, we'd like to welcome the Montana Grizzlies to the dais. To my immediate uh, left, we have uh, senior guard Bobby Moorhead, guard. the man in the middle, Michael Ogine, and on the far left, we have Ahmad Rory, a uh, senior guard. This time, we'll open up for questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We're going to go on the right side on the aisle. Uh, this is for all you guys. Uh, just what are your thoughts being in Des Moines, and how does it feel this time around as opposed to last year in Wichita? We're going to start on the far left with Ahmad. Um, it feels real good. You know, travel was good, and it's, it's a blessing just being able to be out here again for a second year in a row. But we're coming out here prepared, so we had a good practice today and been, just been trying to get a lot of rest. So it feels good having some downtime, be able to have some fun. It feels pretty similar, honestly, to Wichita, the last site we were at. Pretty similar feel, you know. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of fans here, just neutral fans wanting to enjoy a good game. So I'm looking forward to that and just, you know, having a good time with my teammates. Just excited to be here, um, second year in a row, uh, making the NCAA tournament. It's, it's a dream come true. Um, I think we're more focused, more locked in this year and ready to, ready to get after it. Stay on the right side. Bradley Corkin, Montana Radio, all three of you guys, part of the winning is two-year stretch in school history. So I guess a good question for all of you, what are you most proud of in your Grizzly career? Start with the mod, work our way back. Um, just being able to, you know, make it to the tournament twice in a row, win two championships. And um, we have a group that, you know, has worked hard um, each year. So I think with that being said, just having this group that's, you know, been through a lot of adversity but been able to achieve a lot as well. Yeah, just like Ahmad said, just getting to the tournament two years, that's been a great part about it. But also, you know, building something that, you know, we could be proud of, that people in the city are proud of, um, putting a product on the floor that people enjoy, and um, 
you know, we're just bringing like, you know, some enjoyment to the community. I think that's a, a special thing. And I feel like we've been able to do that pretty well in our time. <clears throat> I'm just proud of how much we've grown as a team over these last two years. Um, yeah, like Ahmad said, all the adversity, the championships are amazing. And, uh, and just going through everything with, with your brothers is just the best, the best thing. And so just getting to, to have these guys uh, as lifelong friends is, is awesome. Stay on the right side. Sean Rainey, SWX Montana. You guys, you know, have grown up watching the tournament and watched upsets and and all that. So, what would it mean for you guys to to be that that darling, that upset team? Um, it would mean a lot, you know. And I feel like we honestly have the team to with the potential to do that this year. You know, we have a a very old veteran team, and we're all we've all been through a lot, you know, prepared a lot. So, I think just having a good game plan, you know, and just not really playing with pressure. I feel like if we do that, then we'll be good. But yeah, just growing up, watching a lot of games, it's been, you know, great to see teams go far that probably weren't supposed to go far. Yep, it would be a dream come true, just like Ahmad said, you know, um, growing up, it's always fun to root for the underdogs, having them pull off an upset. That's obviously our goal. So to do that, it'd mean a lot, you know, just for ourselves, for the team, for the city, for everyone that supported us along the way, you know, it'd mean a lot. So that's the goal. I mean, we pretty much know there's going to be upsets every year, so why not us? Um, I mean, I believe. I know the rest of the guys on our team believe, so I think it'd be, just be a dream come true. It'd be super awesome. Uh, Kyle Hansen from Missoulian. Ahmad, just uh, this team, uh, Michigan especially, is just a very strong defensive team, and they're just bigger than you guys size-wise. When you approach this game, just how do you, uh, you know, look at the way how to kind of run your offense against this team? You know, they uh, defend ball screens really well. You know, they defended the three ball really well, which you guys have improved on. How do you guys kind of approach this offensively? Yeah, um, I feel like we need to get out in transition. You know, I feel like we don't do that enough, but when we do, we score at a high rate. And then just moving the ball side to side. And then I know that all the shooters are going to be ready to shoot. And then getting some offensive rebounds, you know, we have guys that are capable of going up there and get rebounds. So we just do those three things. I think we'll be good. I'm going to switch over to the left side. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Derek Berkeley with K-Pax. Bobby, along those lines, matching up with their size, something you're going to have to do personally. So what do you think about that matchup going up against them? It's going to be tough. I mean, uh, yeah, we've dealt with size issues a lot this year, and it's, it's going to be nothing new. I mean, I think uh, their center's, you know, over seven foot, so it's going, to be, it's going to be a really tough matchup. But, you know, it's been tough the whole year, so we just got to, got to get mentally prepared for it and, and just do our best. And I, I think when we've, when we've played our hardest and our best this year, uh, things usually work out, and so that's, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to play, play our hardest. Other questions? Right side. What do you guys remember just from before tip off as far as the jitters of, of last year and, and kind of just being on this this experience and this scene and how much do you think they'll be not as, as big this go around? Start with the mod, work our way to Bobby. Um, well, it was my second time, you know, going to the tournament. I went with Oregon before, so I was familiar with it a little bit, but obviously playing a different role on this team. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of had a little bit of jitters, but just try to just relax, you know, just know that my team was uh, well prepared. And I think this year, you know, with it being my third time and everyone else is second, that we'll just come out here and then be focused and just try to go in the game. I don't think it'll be too big of a deal being nervous. Well, last year, the game kind of got delayed a little bit. I'm pretty sure the game before went to overtime. So that kind of helped out with nerves. Like you had some pregame nerves, but just watching that game, you know, going extended time, Kind of just we're able to relax a little bit and just go out and play our game. Um, but yeah, with the mod, like the mod said, like experience definitely helps with that. So I don't anticipate that you know we'll be as nervous. It'll be more like all right, let's let's get this thing going. Let's take care of business and go from there. So yeah, there definitely were some jitters last year. I think all around. Um, you know, you, you're traveling on a charter flight, which we're not usually used to, with a lot of people who um, aren't normally in our normal travel crew. So there's a lot of different things, a lot of excitement, a lot of hype going on. Um, it's just different, and so. This year, you know, we expected it, we were prepared for it, um, and I think a lot of us are just just more focused. And uh, so I don't think the jitters will be there as much. Obviously, you're still playing on the biggest stage in the country, so there's still going to be a little bit. But um, you know, one year under our belt, we feel different. We feel uh, we truly believe this year, and so I think that's the difference. Other questions? Left side aisle. Michael, coach. Uh, Beeline for Michigan mentioned how much better shooting 
of a team you were last year, missing some shots ended up being really the difference in that game. What do you think about how good of a shooting team you have this year with some of the additions you have too? It definitely makes us stronger, makes us uh, a better team, though to sustain, you know, dry spells. We had a really big dry spell last year against these guys that kind of put us, you know, put us in a deep hole. The improved shooting this year is definitely what's going to help us, you know, stay in the game more. We're going to rely on that. We're going to be able to, you know, get open looks and have confidence and knock them down when the time comes. So it's definitely great to have this year as compared to last year. Right side. You guys faced plenty of adversity, as you mentioned. A couple low points when you fall to Eastern Washington before the Northern Colorado game, and then again when you guys were able to regroup. How much did this moment motivate you guys in those closed-door meetings to get back to the tournament, although things that might have been going against you, but uh, how much did this moment fuel you guys behind those closed-door meetings? I mean, we kind of have a one-game mentality, so throughout the year, you know, we're not necessarily looking towards March Madness or, you know, because for a small school like us, it's pretty tough to get here. Um, so you just kind of got to take it one game at a time, especially after those losses. But we believed in the team that we had and, and what we were capable of. And, and we just kind of um, got away from those things and what we do to get us to this point. And so once we got back on track, I think that's uh, when we really started to believe that we could do this again. Yeah, we kind of knew that our season wouldn't come down to just you know regular conference uh, loss. So we knew that we had a bigger picture at, at hand. So we kind of just you know, said, let's get through this point, let's regroup, let's get better, and let's make sure we're the best we can be when it's time for our conference tournament so we can win three games in a row and get back here. So that's kind of what motivated us. Yeah, um, at that point, we weren't really playing that good at basketball. So when we were able to, you know, regroup, like they said, um, and just knew that it would come down to the three games in the tournament, we knew that we would be fine. So we all have time for a couple more questions. If there are any more questions, five minutes left in this session. Any other questions for our student athletes? Okay, guys, best of luck. We'll let Thanks. you go back to the locker room. We have coach up here shortly. Thank you. Pleased to have with us uh, head coach of Montana Grizzlies, Travis DeCure. The Grizzlies are appearing in the NCAA tournament for the 12th time in program history, including the fifth time in the past decade. The Grizzlies swept the Big Sky Conference regular season and postseason tournament for the second straight year. They are the number 15 seed in the West region, and for the second consecutive year will play Michigan in the final game of Thursday's uh, first round here at Wells Fargo Arena. Coach, welcome to Des Moines. Thank you. 
Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, this is what it's all about for these young men is an opportunity to perform on the biggest stage. I'm sure they just expressed that to you. Kind of feels like Groundhog Day. Um, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, hopefully a different outcome. We got a lot of work to do. This Michigan team is very good. Um, I think a lot of people may expect to see the same thing on the floor in terms of product from each team, but I think we both have evolved in a different direction. Uh, they're more wing dominant than they were last year with their front line. Um, we spread the floor, play a little faster, um, and, and, and put a few more points on the board. So should be a little exciting game tomorrow. And once again, just fortunate to be here. This time we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We have a holder. We're going to start on the left side on the aisle and then come over to you, ma'am, on the right side. Denny O'Grady with the Carroll Daily Times Herald, Carroll, Iowa. Coach, what's going to be the keys to uh, beating Michigan? And do you have any ties to Iowa? No ties to Iowa. Um, you know, Michigan's a tough team to beat. They're good on both sides of the ball, a lot like last year. Um, I, I think Beeline's one of the few coaches uh, that spends a lot of time on both sides of the ball. Most teams have an identity on, on either side. Uh, they defend as well as anyone in the country, 28% from three. Um, it, it's very common to look up and hold teams in the 30s, field goal percentage overall. We like to try to do the same thing. Um, and so for us, the keys are going to be contain Simpson. I, I think he's their motor, he's their machine. He's the one that creates a lot of the offense for the others, keeping him out of the paint, slowing him down in transition, containing him in ball screens and try to force the others to make plays for each other. Um, if we can get them a little out of, out, of, out of sync, you know, slow down their timing uh, in offense, maybe we can force some turnovers and see if we can get out and transition ourselves. We want to score in the high 70s, low 80s. They keep a game in the 60s. So I think the higher the score, probably the better we'll be off. LJ Dawson with the Montana Kaiman. Um, you guys, for the, your whole entire conference season, were the ones at the top that everyone was chasing. Um, the position has switched. You're now the underdogs going up against Michigan. How does that change your mentality for better or worse? Well, we, we've had a few games like that this year where the bullseye wasn't on our back. Not a lot, but a few. And those are the ones our guys performed the best in, to be honest. Whether it was on the road or when we found ourselves in second, third in the standings and, and we were trying to get back to the top. We played with a high level of desperation. Um, I think with a rematch uh, from a year ago, I think our guys are going to go into this game the same way. So hopefully we'll be a lot hungrier um, and focused on all the details that matter and play our best basketball. Stay on the uh, right side on the aisle, then we'll come up front to you, sir. Uh, Kyle Hansen with the Missoulian. Travis, last year you had the same starting lineup all season long and this year it's just been up and down, changes left and right. Going into this game, knowing that this lineup, you've done a lot of small ball this year, do you feel confident, you know, even though you've had so many changes this year? I do. I believe in these guys. I've got veterans in this lineup. Sai Bridges played a lot of basketball games as a junior. He's a senior now. We're, we're in, tail in the season. He's played enough basketball games that we, we've got a lot older guys going on the floor. Um, and so with our maturity, uh, we've, we've been able to settle in through adversity. Um, right now, I think we're playing our best basketball, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Sean Rainey, S3X Montana. Coach, uh, Coach Beeline said that compared to last year's you know, team, the way that you guys are different as far as spreading them out and being able to push the pace and, and play a little bit faster than last year in that matchup, he said it, it's, it's hard to defend. And we've heard a lot of big sky coaches the last few weeks say those same things. So how do you think, you know, maybe matchup-wise, it'll be different than last year? And, and maybe you could exploit some of that. We ran into a brick wall last year. Um, we were, we were post-dominant. We threw the ball inside. We played inside our basketball. Film doesn't tell the story in terms of how physical and how big a team is. And I thought we'd have some advantages at the four spot in the post, and we, we couldn't get a shot off. And so once the game settled down and it became a half-court basketball game, we struggled to get shots. Um, we're a different basketball team right now, and I think the way we're built um, could be advantageous to how they defend. But on the flip side, they have advantages with size, and we've got to find a way to keep that ball out of the paint um, and, and rebound. But I, we've done that with bigger teams this year, and the question is if we can do it again tomorrow night. Left side aisle. Go ahead. 
Coach Derek Berkeley with KPAX, along those same lines, you missed some open shots last year. This team's been great at knocking those down. How confident are you with the shooting that you have this year? Um, doesn't matter how confident I am. Those, those, those guys that you just talked to up here, they got to believe, right? Um, I, I think we're a very confident basketball team. I think that we have found a way to grind and trust each other and play with a high level of confidence in each other, which means our shot selection is a lot better than it was a year ago. We'll turn down an okay shot for a better shot. If we can be patient, knowing that this is a good defensive team that's going to take away first, second options, contest everything, and just work and, and not panic at the end of shot clock, we'll get open shots. We just got to be patient enough to wait for them. I think we'll knock those shots down. But I also think that the key is always to get as many high percentage shots as you can. We're not going to just settle and bomb away from three because that might be the best shot we can get. We're going to find ways to get two-point shots. Um, whether that's tempo or off our defense, we'll, we'll find a way. But the more of those we get, the better off we'll be. Okay, go in the back on the right side, ma'am, and then we're up front. You guys had a really tough non-conference season at the beginning of this um, year or beforehand. How did that prepare you to be here and playing tomorrow? We, we played quite a few teams that either were built to be championship teams or actually did compete for championships. And it's a different feeling when you go on the floor and you match up against someone who thinks they're good enough to hang a banner. And so that prepares you for March. Um, I thought we did well. I thought we improved from the adversity that we dealt with during those stretches. I don't think we were ourselves when we played Creighton. I don't think we were ourselves when we played Arizona. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't go out and perform in those games the way I thought we would when I signed up for those games. Um, but we'd had injuries right before or day of that kept us from putting our best product on the floor, and we weren't able to play with what we prepared. Um, this time around, the guys we're putting on the floor, we've been playing with for a long time now. Um, but I do think those games prepared us for this situation. Travis, your team, uh, pretty much everybody here has been to the tournament on this team. How's the feeling been? Have they just been you know, more calm with everything? Or how have they kind of approached this time around as opposed to last year? It's been more calm the last 12 hours. Um, you know, from a one-bit league, you're, you're going to celebrate. You, you could go 10 years in a row. That Saturday night, if you win a championship, you're going to celebrate like it's the first championship you ever won in your life. And that's what our guys did. They enjoyed the moment. Um, Sunday, they enjoyed Selection Sunday, you know, and we had an incredible, incredible crowd from our community come and, and, and watch the, the show with us and enjoy the moment with us. Uh, Monday's practice, high energy, fun, probably not the most disciplined practice, probably not the most detail-oriented group that day. Uh, but then as time passed, Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. practice, hard to get up for, they were ready to go. Uh, as focused as any team probably could be at 8.15 in the morning. Um, and then today, they were, they were ready to go. And, and I thought I was focused. I thought I was ready to go. And I had a couple of them on me making sure I was ready. So uh, it turned into more of a business trip today. Stay on the right. I think so much as we ask the players what it's like stepping on the court and playing the game and stuff. What about what is it like for you getting going on this game and going up against a, a coach that I know that you have a lot of respect for as well? Um, it's exciting, you know, but I, I built this team to treat every game the same. Whether you're playing Michigan or Eastern Washington or Idaho, you, you have to treat each game the same so that when one becomes more meaningful, you can handle um, the rise in intensity in the moment, right? But you also show up for a game that you might not pencil in on your calendar when the schedule comes out. Um, so. You know, for us, it, it, it's, it's more than just another game. Obviously, your, your season either continues or ends tomorrow night. Um, but our guys are excited and ready to go. I'm excited and ready to go. It's a big moment for me. This is what I dream of is, is coaching an NC2A tournament. As a head coach, it's my second time. I'd love to be able to do this every year. And, and until I have that type of program, um, I'm going to enjoy the moment. So when I step on the floor, I look at this, the bright lights, I smile, enjoy the moment, and when the ball goes in the air, it's time to go to war. Stay on the right side. We have five minutes left in this session. 
Travis, something about Michigan is that they can also have spurts offensively where they don't score, you know, five, six, seven minutes. You guys are also a defensive-oriented team. How do you guys force them into one of those stretches, and then also how do you take advantage of that on the offensive end? It's hard to answer without giving up the scout report. <laughs> um, we just got to do what we do. You know, don't gamble. Be in all the right spots. We, we know where the ball wants to go. We know when they're trying to get a shot and where for the most part. If we're in the right places at the right times, that moment will happen. And, and that's what we're known for. We're known for holding teams scoreless for minutes, two, three, four minutes. Um, one of the, I think Weaver finished the season leading the conference in scoring. We held them scoreless for what, 10 minutes? Hopefully we can do that again. And, and I'm not comparing the two teams. Michigan's a better basketball team, there's no question about it. But if we're in the right places and we, we, we pick up the flow, of, of their offense at some point in time. We should be in all the right spots at the right time, and hopefully it turns into one of those stretches. Stay on the right. Coach asked his players the same question, but what are you most proud of during this two-year run to lead your alma mater to back-to-back -to -back tournaments, 26 wins in each year? You want me to answer that without bragging? It's hard to do. I'm proud of my guys. Uh, I, you know, Amari Rory, um, you're talking about a top 50 recruit in the country that's playing for a, a program that's in the one mid league. Transfers down from the Pac-12. Um, he's been on a number one nationally ranked team in the country. I mean, he's got a lot, of, a lot of reasons to throw up 20 shots a game like a lot of guards we played against this year. And he's taking a back seat, not to anyone, but just to the moment to benefit our team, our program, to, to give us an opportunity to sit here in front of you right now. Um, I'm proud of him for that because that's hard to do. And when, when, you, when you dream of playing in the NBA, you dream of playing for money, sometimes your stats, your accolades are important. And, and a lot of times those things are worth dollar signs. And he put those in the back seat to get here to win a championship. I'm proud of him for that. Saeed Pridget, you know, for two years, he's, he's wanted to be the guy. He's wanted to get shots. He's wanted the ball in his hands. He's wanted to start, and he waited his turn, and he trusted me. Uh, Michael Guine had the best freshman year in the history of Montana basketball. And going into his sophomore year, everyone had big expectations for him to maybe be the best player to ever put on a jersey at Montana. But here comes Ahmad Rory. Here comes Saeed Pridget. He's got a share. Here comes Jamar Coe. So we've got guys on the floor that can also score at a high rate with him. And so he goes from expecting to score 25 a game himself to 12, 13. But he's had 30-point games. They've all had 30-point games, but none of them average 20. It's very difficult to do. Um, so I'm proud of the selflessness that my group has expressed and shown together to build a championship program. I have time for two more questions. Okay, go back on the right side. What do you hope, it is a senior crew that you're gonna be playing with for possibly the last time tomorrow night or moving on, what do you hope for those three guys playing tomorrow night? Ah. <laughs> uh. I want to see them walk out of the arena with a smile on their face. Um, that means either we won <laughs> or they're proud of the effort that they put forward and the product that they put out in representation of our community, our program, their families, their friends. Um, I, I want them to walk out of here proud and that's not easy to do in defeat. So we got to find a way to win um, and play our best basketball. Any other questions out there? Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Montana will be uh, practicing at 540 on the court.